Hey guys, it's XN Shadow, and welcome back to Let's Play Muramasa the Demon Blade. In the last part, I believe we kicked Yuki Nojo's ass, and in this part, we're going to be trying to find the uh, the blade, the Kiramitsu blade, if I remember correctly, where you can, uh, which is we need to use in order to get uh, Jinkuro a better body, because who wants to be a girl? Am I right? Please. Please don't hurt me. I'm, I'm joking. Uh, anyway, um, actually, uh, in between in between recording sessions, uh, VanillaWare announced that they are going to be doing a remastering of Odin Sphere, which is another game that they did on the PS2, I think, and I think it's going to be released on the PS3 and the PS4 and the Vita, I believe. So, you know, that's cool. Um, I've heard that Odin Sphere is a great game. Uh, it uh, supposedly plays pretty similarly to... A Muramasa. Um, and another thing that uh, uh, I heard too was is that unfortunately it did have some frame rate issues. So, you know, I'm hoping that like Banjo 2e before it, you know, getting a, re a remastering will allow, you know, uh, will allow for the, the game to just basically shine the way it was it was meant to. Because, you know, I can forgive frame rate, uh, I can for forgive frame rate, frame rate, frame rate problems in a lot of games but i do prefer them to have a smooth frame rate so ah shit i missed all those i missed all those really good <laughs> souls now i'm gonna have to go back down and get them <sighs> okay well that's not a big deal but anyway yeah that's pretty you know that's pretty sweet that you know the that game is getting remastered because uh odin sphere is a game that i've been wanting to try out for some time and now that it's actually getting a remastering, it's a perfect excuse to give it a shot, and if it's anywhere near as good as Muramasa is, then I'm sure to enjoy it quite a bit, so yeah. Uh, anyway, there is actually a reason why you'd want to drop down the waterfall, it's not just for souls and for- Oh, it's for this hot pot cooking, that's actually very important, let's see. I think we get cabbage hot pot, boiled uh, miso soup, oh, we get the pheasant hot pot, that is very important. Briefly decreases enemy encounters. Great for backtracking. Like, absolutely amazing for backtracking. And you just do not give a shit about fighting the enemies. So, anyway. Uh, a tiger pellet. That should be a slightly better version of the pellets we've already had. So, this time, we're going to fly down slowly and get the big soul. And now we can actually continue. So yeah, that's actually a, pr a pretty cool thing. Uh, this is actually the only vanilla Ware game I've played. I should get around to playing Dragon's Crown at some point, since, you know, problematic uh, character designs aside, it does look like a really fun game. Um, and uh, Odin Sphere, I've been looking forward to trying Odin Sphere for a while, because I've always been really interested in Norse mythology, which I believe, um, I believe... Uh, Odin Sphere takes a lot of inspiration from, and uh, it's just, it's one of those mythologies that, you know, I've always been interested in, but I know very little about, you know. Most of my Norse mythology comes from <laughs> the Thor comic, the Thor, like Thor from Marvel, and, you know, that's probably not anywhere close to accurate, so um, I should probably change that at some point, so yeah, Odin Sphere looks pretty cool. Um, and also, another thing that you guys brought up in the comments section which i'm i'm eternally grateful for you guys pointing out things in the comments because i'm really tired of fighting this pheasant i'm just gonna this is why i don't why i usually just quick slash these guys because they're really annoying <laughs> but anyway um one thing that you guys brought up in the comments section which i am eternally grateful for is is that um apparently i made a mistake when i was talking about rankai uh, apparently he didn't, um, it wasn't that, like, a friend of his or his brother or anything got crippled. It was Rankai himself who got crippled. Uh, in Japan, from what I've learned, uh, monks take a different name when they monk themselves, become a monk, whatever. Um, and if I actually, I took the time to take a brief peek at the Vita translation, they make it much more clear that it was Rankai himself who was the one who got, uh, who got um, uh, who got crippled in that duel? Which is, uh, you know, why Rankai himself hasn't fought us. We're just kind of fighting his mooks and everything. So yeah, that's actually I find that really ah shit. I hate bombs. <laughs> um, that I, I just I find that really cool because um, you know well not necessarily the fact that uh, 
that Rankai himself was the one who's crippled, it basically makes his motivations essentially the same, although it is a little bit more selfish and revenge driven as opposed to kind of a more righteous revenge as to, uh, you know, somebody else he knew was was injured. So, you know, I think it, that actually fits with his character a little bit better. Um, you know, that, you know, it's just like, I want revenge against this guy who hurt me personally. I think that's more in line with the rank guy than, oh, you killed my brother or something, you know? Uh, so yeah, um, I just, you know, I just, I, I, I am eternally grateful to the people in the comments section who are, uh, at least the, at the very least familiar, more familiar with Japanese, uh, folklore and history in the language than I am because I'm kind of an ignorant motherfucker. So I really, I really thank all of you for being, uh, so, um, for pointing things out to me, but not being dicks about it too, because <laughs> it, it's very easy to be a dick about it. And I appreciate you guys being very civil and just, you know, pointing out whenever I get something wrong. I always greatly appreciate whenever someone, uh, whenever someone helps me learn something new. So, and I am getting my ass handed to me. Uh, I should probably fix that. Or hopefully I can just um, kill this guy and and because this is I could just walk out of here I, I I know but I just I want to beat up some ninjas okay you really can't blame me for that one but anyway if I remember correctly the upcoming dungeon we're about to come to is actually one of my favorites in the game so uh, I'm looking forward to that and we leveled up not too long ago so let's look at the forge and see if there's anything we can actually I believe we should be able to nope we are not able to use that blade but we can use a new short sword which is good the kagetsu muramasa actually another thing that people uh people have taught me is is, is that again i forget uh, their names but i think the the last name like the second word in the name of the sword is supposed to be the swordsmith so obviously we have muramasa forging us all of our swords so it makes sense that they're called the mutsuki muramasa or whatever but that means that this, the Kas Kasagiri Hiromitsu, was forged by a swordsmith named Hiromitsu, which I think is pretty cool. But anyway, since this is our weakest sword at the moment, we are going to upgrade our short sword to the Kagetsu Muramasa. So no more Earth Hornet, but we do get Raiden, which I believe is some kind of thunder spell. I do know that much. I think Rai is is a word that has something to do with thunder or lightning because and you can actually if you know pokemon raichu it it makes sense right and actually we're supposed to go that way and i can tell because the flag up there is leading in that direction so we're going to go explore the other way because that's how i do things around here um so whenever once i get done exploring the, this dead end uh, i will cut back to that uh, branching path and Oh, it's good that I went this way because there's a there's a shop here. Okay, so what do you want? Take your mind, take off your wajari. Um, <laughs> so oh, so we were rude and barged into his house, and we get yam. Okay, awesome. Well, actually, it is good that we went this way because uh, being able to stop by the the shop is very good. So anyway, we can we can get some uh some sake here. Um, do you have, ah, man, I am really low on money, but, oh, I've got just enough for another, for <laughs> another hot pot, so that's, that's all I care about. Okay, but anyway, we can now make stewed yam, uh, so I could either use the yams on sweet potatoes or the stewed yam, which briefly enables auto-recover, ooh, that's very nice. Basically, auto-recover allows us to come back to light, wait. It either brings us back to life or it automatically heals us uh, as we fight. It's either or. Um, but yeah. Oh, there's a soba shop here too that I probably will not be able to... Um, I will probably not be able to afford. So if you're a fox looking to do some drinking here, please leave. Oh man, that... Oh man, I, I do enjoy the, the dialogue in this game even though it's not perfectly translated. And I could even afford soba, although now I'm flat broke. So yeah, um... So, yeah, okay, so, okay, my, ah, uh, freaking umbrella people. All right, so let's see what Raiden does, because I don't, yeah, creates little electric balls that'll sort of shake down enemies. That's pretty cool. Not the best special in the world, but pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, that's neat. Um, so if I know my Muramasa, going to the left here will lead to a dead end at the Mino District, and then we'll head down over to the right bottom right and then that'll uh 
that'll lead us to where one of Kisuke's dungeons would be. And damn it, the damn it, the item is on the other side of the barrier. Of course it is. All right, well, let's go see where Kisuke's dungeon leads to. Um, some people have asked in the comments. Again, I I'm sorry that I forget names. Uh, I'm just I'm bad with that in general. Um. A white barriers. You cannot break those until after you've beaten a story, uh, beaten a character story. So you cannot beat them. You cannot break them until you've beaten a Mom Momohime story or Kisuke story. After you beat a story, you aren't locked out. You can go back and play as that character again and like roam around the roam around the overworld and do whatever you want. Um, and that's actually when I recommend going up against a lot of the the challenge room because they can be hard. Although if you do do them early, you do get really good rewards for beating the challenge rooms. Like the monk the monk room that I was just uh, that I was trying to do a few parts ago. If you beat that uh, if you beat that room, you get an, you get an accessory that decreases the amount of that decreases the amount of damage you take. Uh, so, you know, that's always really helpful. Um, but I'm going to go... And it's also good for experience as well. But I'm going to mostly ignore them for the time being. Because it just... It makes it easier for me to track where they are when I'm doing uh, backtracking to try to get all of them in the... Um, in the over... In the... In the overworld after the fact. Because you can't see what the recommended level for... A, you can't see what the recommended level for a uh, for a for a challenge room is until after you've tried it once. So you could break open a a barrier and see what the recommended level is, and then it could be like 27 while you're at level like 19, and then you're like, oh, I I stand no chance, and so you leave. But then if you've done that a couple of times and you've beaten some challenge rooms but not others you might be wondering okay have i beaten this one before have i not and you might end up uh doing uh more work than you need to as you just manually beat all of them even if you've beaten them before so what i do is i personally leave all of the seals uh unbroken and so i know that if there's an unbroken seal on that challenge on that challenge room then there's then it hasn't been done yet and i keep on trying it until it's it's done that's basically just how I do it. You can do it however you want. You know, it's your playthrough. But anyway, since we're going to be doing an awful lot of backtracking in between uh, here and getting up to where that uh, that that room with the the room with the unclaimed item near the safe point, I'm going to be backtracking there. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. And we're back. Okay, so now that we've finished exploring that particular dead end, uh, it's only a dead end on Momohime's playthrough, though. Down there, that's a dungeon that you actually have to go as Kisuke, and it's a dungeon that you'll actually want to explore as Momohime after you beat the game, so that you can 100% uh, everything. But, yeah, so that's a dead end for now. But now we are going to continue our way to, uh, frickin', frickin' ninjas. Frickin' bombing ninjas Ugh. not all ninjas throw bombs but they're really annoying when they do because bombs can b bombs are almost guaranteed to break a blade uh, if, if you block while doing them and that's that's just a pain in the ass so yeah um trying to do a playthrough on the one hit ko mode i have not been able to do that just because that just sounds like an ordeal um it's not necessarily that much harder in that like again, there aren't, there isn't really a game over in Muramasa. The worst thing that can happen when you lose a fight is, is that you get teleported to the room, the beginning of the room, or in the case of a boss fight, you're just teleported out of a boss fight and you gotta try again. So the worst thing that you can lose is items and resources. So you know, not too big of a deal. Um, but the and you know, it's very possible to get through most fights without getting hit. It's just a matter of you have to play a lot more carefully. So. It's not completely un undoable, it's not an impossible kind of feat like, say, beating Castlevania 1 without getting hit, but it is very difficult, and I don't personally have much uh, interest in doing a, uh, a one, the 1 HP mode, hit mode, oh, these guys, oh, these frickin' frogs, I remember these guys. Okay, so the thing about these frogs is, is that they can very easily poison you, and that's annoying. So, be careful not to get hit by their attacks, because... They are just annoying assholes, and they, yeah, just try not to get hit. This is a a, a room where it's very important 
to just try to keep from getting hit. Um, you can deflect their projectile attack, so don't worry about that. And I don't think that they actually have um, any physical attacks, so you don't have to worry about getting up close as long as you keep on slap uh, slashing. And Toad Oil, I do not actually remember what that does, so uh, I'll have to get back to you on that. And I got another one, okay. Uh, well, we, we, have mul we have extras now. <laughs> I don't know how important that will be, but we do have extras, and we leveled up, so I believe that means that we can now equip the yellow sword. So let's get rid of the the Mutsuki Muramasa and equip the... Oh god, the Izumokami Naginori, uh, which gives us the moon... Oh, Absorb Soul, that's actually a good ability that I don't quite remember what it does, but I know it's good! <laughs> so yeah, and then we'll head to the... E uh, the he Hida District? Hida District? Something's telling me it's the Hida District. Um, and I believe in that district we'll actually be able to start the next dungeon of the game, which is nice. Um, again, that's what uh, the next dungeon coming up is one of my favorites, if only because of the visuals and the music. So, uh, yeah, awesome. Or wait, or do we have to go all the way to Mino? Because I believe Hida has a dungeon that's... Uh, is a different dungeon? Or maybe am I thinking... I'm not really sure what I'm thinking. Oh, nope. The dungeon we're looking for is uh, coming up next. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, frickin' ninjas. Of course there are. Of course. Okay, so anyway, let's try out... Let's try out that new... Oh, man. I will say, although I'm not a fan of the... I'm not a fan of using the long blades particularly, having a, a barrier-breaking long blade, like with the, the flames and such uh that's pretty awesome looking <laughs> if i like a a gigantic flaming sword like come on that's pretty cool oh and we've got it looks like we've got burning burning and poison uh basically work interchangeably and moon ring does like kind of a slashy motion so it's kind of like a good kind of cover your bases kind of like if you've got enemies swarming you that's a good time to use moon ring because you kind of stay in place and do kind of a circular slash so you don't have to move an awful lot and Shoot, I actually forgot an item in the previous room, which means I'm going to have to walk back in here next time. Crap. Okay. Well, I'm going to get that a tiger pellet. Uh, okay, time to time to go pick that item up. Okay. And I only got five extra XP for that. Okay, so where the heck is that item? Oh, here the heck is that item. We got cabbage. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not going through this again. We're just going to... Yeah, we're going to walk out now. Oh, uh... Oh, the frickin', the frickin' ice ladies. Uh, they have a name, I know that, because I'm pretty sure that there's a, there's actually an SMT monster that is basically these, these ones, although they don't, the, the SMT monster, oddly enough, does not have quite that big of a bust. <laughs> um, I forget its name, though, so, if you're gonna, you're gonna have to... You're gonna have to remind me about that, but I do know that in Shimigami Tensei, there's a there's a monster that I'm pretty sure is based off of the same thing as that specific monster, and it's um, and it's uh, and it's usually a relatively low level demon in that series. Uh, but yeah, and oh, finally we're gonna go into a, uh, an area that doesn't start with a with an attack. That's with an attack. That's nice. Um, and we got an EO stone. Okay, that's good. Um, okay, and we shall save again. I, you know, I just gotta say, I love these snowy, I love these snowy looking areas. Especially, like, these, where they're kind of, like, harsh looking in particular. Um, here's the thing. I grew up in, Bo I grew up in Boston, and I currently live in Boston. And, uh, Boston, if you are unfamiliar with the area, can get pretty snowy in the winter. It's not like Alaska or Canada, but this past winter we actually had a... We actually had a snow apocalypse that was particularly brutal, and we got like I think it was some ridiculous amount of snow. It was the most snow we had. It was not only the most snow that we had ever had in an entire winter, but almost all of it came in late January and through February. So we didn't just break a record; we broke a record like all at one time. So it was just absolutely obnoxious. Oh, and a new a new accessory. What does that do? Sukio Sig scale. No. Pro Poison, that will actually be very useful in later areas, too. Um, I know that I could go left and explore more of the area that way, but I kind of just want to get to the next dungeon in this part. And we've got... Hmm. 
Actually, you know what? I believe we'll be start stopping a little bit early this time. And then next part, we will be starting off our next dungeon. Because we actually did a lot of overworld exploration today. So um, next time, we'll get started with exploring the next dungeon of the game. So, you know, good for you guys. Um, and the next dungeon is just absolutely beautiful. But what I was getting at is, is that I love areas that kind of have winter, a winter vibe, but a particularly harsh winter vibe because it's a beautiful kind of, it's a beautiful kind of scenery, but it's also, it, it it's much like winter in that it's cold and desolate and it doesn't hold back and it's just kind of a dead feeling. Uh, it's actually the same sort of vibe I get from Lost Winds Winter of the Melodias, which is a game I've also let's played. You should check that out. <laughs> plug, plug, plug. But yeah, um, I just I, I really enjoy the I really enjoy this game's uh, this game scenery in almost every area. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And it looks like we've got a new sword to forge. So let's get started on that. Getting the Tamatsubaki Muramasa. Tamatsubaki, I think it is. Uh, anyway, and we should be getting another short sword next time. So that's also pretty cool. And anyway, uh, let's get that equipped. Um, which one of these is the... Oh, it looks like we're going to have to say goodbye to our to our Moonlight. Oh, well. Uh, but we will get Deathblade, which just sounds pretty badass in general. But anyway, uh, next time on Let's Play Muramasa the Demon Blade, we're going to be exploring the next dungeon of the game, which is one of my favorites. It's an absolutely gorgeous area, and, and I love it. So uh, until then, I'll see you guys later.